Okay, so what are intercepts? Um, intercepts are points where a graph touches either the x-axis or the y-axis. So if a point touches the x-axis, that point is called an x-intercept. And if a point touches the y-axis, that point is called a y-intercept. So for example, this line has one y-intercept right here. So this ordered pair would be the y-intercept, and it has one x-intercept right here. That would also be an ordered pair. OK, but um, you can have multiple intercepts or no intercepts. Let's take a look at some other examples. This line has a single y-intercept and no x-intercepts. In this graph, if this pattern continues forever to the left and the right, you can imagine that there are an infinite number of x-intercepts and only a single y-intercept. In this graph, you have tend to have a single x-intercept and a single y-intercept. Notice that the graph does not cross through the, the x-axis, it just touches. That's still considered an intercept. In this last example, there is only one intercept. It happens to be the origin. So this point, 0, 0, is the x-intercept because it touches the x-axis. And it's also a y-intercept because it touches the y-axis. So lots of possibilities here. Now, in general, what properties do intercepts have? Well, let's consider x-intercepts first, OK? X-intercepts are points on the x-axis, right? Any x-intercept has to be on the x-axis. Well, if you think about any of these points on the x-axis, the ordered pair for one of these points will look something like this. It'll be some x value, some horizontal distance, the x-coordinate, comma, and then since there's no vertical distance for these points, the y-coordinate will be 0. So to find the x-intercepts, um, y has to equal 0. So this is useful if you know the equation of a function, for example. Here are two different functions, and I'm just going to give you the idea of how you would find the x-intercepts. You need to set y equal to 0. Um, because every x-intercept has a y value of 0. So in a function, the f of x or the g of x is the y. So you simply replace that with 0, and then you proceed to solve for x. Same thing over here. And so the type of equation you can get from this can vary. For example, the first equation is linear, and you would simply subtract 1 to get x by itself. The second equation, however, is quadratic. You may have to factor it or use some other means to solve this equation. But nonetheless, you'll get x values. And so your final answer will look like this. Your y-coordinate will be 0, because remember, x-intercepts are points, so they're ordered pairs. So you have to write them as ordered pairs. The y-coordinate would be 0. And then your x values that you just found would go in the x-coordinate of the ordered pair. Now let's look at y-intercepts, and you can imagine any y-intercept that you would ever find would have to be some point on the y-axis, and every point on the y-axis would look like this. Its horizontal distance now is 0. All of these points have a horizontal distance of 0, so that's the x-coordinate, and then the y-coordinate would be some number, right, how far up or down you are. So for y-intercepts, you always set the x equal to 0. So let's look at our functions again. If we wanted to find the y-intercepts of our same two functions as before, we would set the x values to 0. So every place I would see an x, I would replace with 0. And then, you know, we're trying to write these as ordered pairs, right? Because intercepts are in ordered pairs, and I'm trying to find the y-intercepts. So Every y-intercept, the x is 0, so I know the answer is going to be 0, comma, something. So now we have to figure out what y is. Well, remember that f of x and g of x are y, so I like to replace those with y, and then go through and solve these equations for y, which is very easy to do in this case. So figure out what your y values are, then you put whatever those y values are into your ordered pair right here, and you have all your y-intercepts.